Hi guys, it's Kamil here and I'm coming to you with the review of Blood Meridian by Cormac McCarthy. A few weeks back I was reviewing The Child of God. That was the example of Cormac McCarthy Gothic Tennessee period. This one is the example of his Western one. It was published in 1985 and on the plot level it follows the historical account of white scalp hunters that in late 40s and early 50s of 19th century were massacring native villages on the border of southwestern USA and Mexico. The main protagonist of this novel is the nature and the landscape. Those are dark, devilish, nightmarish, outerworldly, possessed by demons and devils. Those terms and its synonyms are the adjectives that Comic McCarthy uses to describe this surrounding with. The main human protagonist of this novel, the kid, doesn't even have a proper name. I think it's justified to say that because of that, Comic McCarthy wants us to focus on the world that is surrounding human characters. It's needless to say that there are hardly any inner psychological processes or thought processes that Comic McCarthy describes in this book that would give you the glimpse of who the characters in Worldly are. You get to know them through indirect or, or direct informations or through cold descriptions of actions undertaken by them. And those human characters are as dark as the landscape surrounding them. They make the hell complete. Give me a sec. And they saw one day a pack of viciously looking humans mounted of unshot Indian ponies riding half trying through the streets, beard barbarous clad in the skins of animals, stitched up with tears and armed with weapons of every description, and a horse raw looking and wild in the eye, and their teeth part were like feral dogs, and riding also in the company of number of half naked savages, reeling in the saddle, dangerous, filthy, brutal, the whole like a visitation from some heathen land where they and others like them fed on human flesh. Man, once again, here is the embodiment of pure evil. And whereas in other McCarthy's works that I've read, there were some examples of purer behavior, purer heart. Here, there's hardly any. The kid, probably the purest one, is only purer, not pure bear that in mind, because he is younger than the others and the world didn't have enough time to demoralize, demoralize him completely yet. And he is still purer than the others, becomes the puppet in the hands of Judge, probably the most fascinating character in this novel. The one that is a manipulator, a philosopher, sexual deviant, almost immortal one with a wide knowledge. The one that also describes himself as the one that never sleeps and will never die. He is also the character whose origins are unknown and all of that makes him very devilish, very outworldly. Judge's theology of war, just give me a sec, just proves how devilish his character is, how different set of values that we tend to believe in he has at his hands. It makes no difference what men think of war, said the judge. War endures. As well ask men what they think of stone. War was always here. Before man was, war waited for him. The ultimate trait awaiting its ultimate practitioner. This is the way it was and will be. That way and not some other way. And then later on when he describes war as a place of some higher absolute intervention where one man is chosen over the other, one dies and the other survives, and he sees it as a pure divinity. He says, this is the nature of war, whose stake is at once the game and the authority and the justification. Since so, war is the truest form of divination. It is the testing of one's will and the will of another within that larger will, which because it binds them is therefore forced to select. War is the ultimate game because war is at last a forcing of the unity of existence. War is God. Having that in mind and reading earlier passages describing 
human as being created by God when devil was at hand and the one that brings evil to this world makes me think again reading McCarthy that he sees us as being doomed our thirst for blood our love for war are the example of it and what's also significant when you read this novel is the fact that he says it within the western romantic myth and he totally destroys it because here we see those kind of white scalp hunters as not pure cowboys as we were very often tend to uh, believe but as bloodthirsty evil cruel gang of people focusing only on their need for survival. It's even more significant when you take into account that his description of the West so far from this romantic story of white men bringing the civilization to this God-forgotten piece of land is based on historical accounts. It's not just McCarthy's dark fantasy. It's based on historical accounts. And on more personal note, this is not a book that is easy to read. Those repetitive nature of the violence in this novel, I mean, of course, complementing the McCarthy's idea of evil, the omnipresence of evil, is very tiring. But in the same time, and what is, I think, more interesting, it makes you, the reader, become numb. You are reading another massacre description. You are seeing another head sculpted and the body massacred. And you are becoming less and less empathic. Maybe not as bloodthirsty as the members of the gangs are. But for sure less empathic. Okay guys, that's it. Tell me if you read this book. Tell me what were your thoughts. I would like to know if you appreciate reading it. And... Are you going to reread it again? Because for sure I will. There is so much that I probably missed or didn't get while reading it for the first time. This is a very dense one, but I'm really happy that I picked it up. I was badly reading it with Kathleen Ann. And thank you, Kathleen, for another McCarthy's body read. We are going to read Outer Dark at the end of this month. Okay, that's it, and I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye, guys.